Hi guys, it's Kiri and welcome back. Um, today's video is a pretty hot topic and I'm probably going to get a lot of heat for this one. But I felt it was something I should chime in on uh, as a trans woman. This topic is transgender athletes. There's a lot of controversy on this lately. And I was actually of one mind before I talked with my friend Vanessa the other day. Um, and I really respect her opinion. Her views actually started to change my opinion. I then went ahead and did my own research. Um, I was initially misinformed and I didn't know enough about some of the important details before I started talking to her about this. Uh, there are links in the description box below to uh, a few articles and uh, medical journals discussing this. First, a bit of background information on trans women. Now, I'm not going to address trans men as I really don't know that much about the effects of cross-sex hormone replacement therapy on them. Um, so when we trans women start taking estrogen and testosterone blockers, we start a sort of second puberty. The testosterone blockers do exactly what their name implies, they block and reduce the production and effect of testosterone. <coughs> estrogen as anyone who took sex ed knows, uh, is basically the female equivalent of testosterone. Um, and it's primarily responsible for breast development as well as uh, all the other secondary female sex characteristics. While HRT doesn't reverse um, some of the effects of testosterone during our original puberty in our teens, it does reverse some and that's what I'm going to be talking about today and how these changes affect athletic performance in trans women. So the biggest change that in this area that most people know is a reduction of muscle mass, uh, particularly in the upper body. Now, over time, our muscles will become very close, if not identical, in mass and composition to that of a genetic female of our size. Other less well-known um, changes that are that trans women's red blood cell count and lung capacity are also decreased. almost to the same point as natal women as well. The one thing that studies do show that doesn't change by any real measurable way is bone density. Um, our bones stay stronger than our natal counterparts on average. Um, the other obvious thing that stays the same in trans women is we are typically taller Certainly not always, but they're typically taller and physically larger than most natal women. Now, the fact that our muscles, red blood cell count, and lung capacity decreases, which it reaches its peak, i.e. comparable to our natal counterparts, uh, peaks around two years on HRT. Now, this is important. I would totally agree that trans women have a distinct athletic advantage within those first two years. But the advantage is severely lessened or eliminated in some cases after the two years. The height thing? Well, there are lots of very tall natal women, so you can't really count that. And depending on the sport, bone density may or may not be a factor. Uh, for example, martial arts. Yes, a high bo higher bone density 
will give a degree of an advantage. But again, there are natal women with higher than average bone density as well. Now, there's also a lot of genetic females that have unusually high testosterone levels naturally. So this is really, really starts to muddy the waters in the case against trans women having a distinct advantage over genetic females. Obviously a lot more research needs to be done. There, there's an increasing, increased number of trans athletes and to outright deny them the opportunity to compete just because they used to be male is not only unfair, but it, it's inaccurate. From the studies that I've read and articles on this, I can't see any glaring any glaring unfair advantage that trans women have over natal women. Now, that being said, I do think that they should not be allowed to compete until after the first two years on HRT, and they should have a blood test done to prove that they are still at the female levels of hormones. Um, this is totally not counting the people that identify as female and use as an excuse to compete. Um, that's a totally different kettle of fish. I'm talking about the genuine transgender athletes who just want to compete. Um, like I mentioned in my four month HRT update, my own testosterone and estrogen levels are now virtually identical to a natal female. I now have just as hard a time as other women burning fat and gaining muscle. In fact, my upper body muscles um, are shrinking measurably, measurably week by week. I know this video is going to piss some people off. And a week ago, I would have been pissed off too. But I did my research and I learned some things that I didn't know. I urge you to do the same. And as I said below, uh, earlier, there are a few links below. Check them out and do your own research. Um, feel free to post your comments, uh, good or bad. I do read every comment. Um, so let's get a discussion going. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you haven't, also check out my Patreon and my merch in the description box. So, uh, until next time, bye!